All right, team, we're gonna go over another hydrostatic example here, hydrostatic force example. And in this case, we're looking at rectangular wicket dam. So wicket dam is a plate that is anchored by a pin to some thing on the bottom. And then it's got just a, a rod or some sort of beam that is holding it up. So we wanna find the reaction force in that beam. So we're calling that beam beam B D. And obviously it has a reaction force that's holding this up in opposition to the pressure force from the water. So the width of this dam is three meters. So it goes three meters kind of into the water. It's 15 meters long. And here's some more information. We know that this wicket is acting at about the, at 7.5 meters along that wicket dam from the bottom. We've got a 30 degree angle here. Um, and then the depth of the water is five meters. We're gonna neglect the weight of the dam for this problem. Obviously this plate has a weight and then we would have to think about the force of the weight acting on the centroid. Uh, but to simplify things, we're gonna ignore that. So let's take a look at a free body diagram. We've got the wicket dam right here at its angle. We have, let me just draw that angle in real quick. We've got the force of pressure, which is acting at some distance YP at the plates. Um, and then this is gonna be, uh, we'll, we'll calculate that in a second. We've got this force acting um, 7.5 meters from this pin. And then obviously we have reactionary forces in X and Y direction. Note that I've drawn the Y and X axis um, in the perpendicular plane, not parallel to this plate. Let's go back up here for a second. And we need to calculate where um, YP is going to be acting at. So first things first is how long is this submerged portion of the dam? And we know that the depth is five feet. We know this angle, so we can calculate this hypotenuse, right? Um, so if this is five, this is 30 degrees, this is five, right? So what's this hypotenuse? Um, that is going to be, um, so if we'll do five meters over sine of 30, and that's gonna equal 10 meters, okay? So that length hypotenuse is 10 meters. And we can write that in right here. All right, so if we go back down here, we know that this whole length is 10 meters. So we can say whatever YP is, this is just gonna be 10 meters minus YP, all right? So the first step in finding you know, reactionary forces in any statics problem in this type of example is we're gonna do the sum of moments about this axis. Um, in, the, in this case, we'll call this um, A, right? So the sum of moments about A, and we'll call this the positive direction. So clockwise is equal to zero, so it's at rest. And that is going to be equal to the pressure force times the distance from that pin. So that's gonna be 10 meters minus YP minus our force, a reaction force at that, that beam. And that is gonna be acting at 7.5 meters. And that was a given, all right? So this force is trying to turn the beam clockwise, so it's positive. This force is trying to turn the beam counterclockwise, so it's negative, all right? Ultimately, this is what we wanna solve. Now we need to find the particular force components. Um, but maybe first I'll just solve it for the BD force. So force BD, which is what we wanna solve, it is equal to our pressure force times 10 meters minus YP all over 7.5 meters. All right, so we'll just keep that in mind. Now let's solve the individual force terms. We'll do the pressure force and that is equal to our um, depth, vertical depth to the 
a centroid of that uh, wicket dam times the area, which is going to be equal to, um, in this case, we're doing metric, so 9810 newtons per meter squared. Or sorry, newtons per meter cubed is our specific weight. And then the H bar, let's go back up here and look at H bar for a second. H bar is going to be um, halfway down, right? So if this is fully submerged, so we're going to think about this 10 meter length of fully submerged, and then the, the centroid is really just going to be halfway down. So I should have drawn this right here. This is really our H bar. Um, so it's just going to be halfway down. So that's easy enough to do. And the halfway down is going to be the depth halfway down. So if the total depth is five meters, then h bar is just going to be five over two meters. All right. And then the area is our three meters times that submerged depth, which is 10 meters. So our pressure force ends up being 7.36 times 10 to the fifth Newtons. Note that we get to cross off meter, 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 meter. So meters cubed uh, in the numerator and the denominator is meters cubed. Great, so we end up with Newtons. All right, now what else do we need? We need YP, so let's do our YP. And that is equal to the moment of inertia times, or sorry, over y bar times the area plus y bar. And remember that y bar is the distance to the centroid along this length, which should be pretty easy to calculate here. So for a rectangle, the moment of inertia is equal to 1 12th b, so that's the width times the um, height cubed. So let's put in some numbers here. One over 12 times three meters times 10 meters cubed. All right, take a second to plug that in your calculator. We end up with 250 meters to the fourth. So that's our moment of inertia. All right, now let's go ahead and plug our numbers in here. So y sub p is equal to 250 meters to the fourth all over y sub bar. So y sub bar is just halfway down. Um, the whole length that submerged is 10 meters. So halfway down is gonna be five meters and then times the area, which is 30 meters cubed plus again, y sub bar five meters. So all of that ends up being 6.67 meters. And now we have everything we need. Just revisit that. The reactionary force was the pressure force times the distance from the axis, the, the inertia axis, or sorry, moment axis, and then divided by the um, distance that it's acting on. So. Force BD is equal to 7.36 times 10 to the fifth Newtons times 10 meters minus 6.67 meters. That was YP all over that distance um, that the beam was acting on, holding the wicket dam up. And so we end up with 3.3 times 10 to the fifth Newtons as our answer. If we look at sig figs, let's go back here. And I think everything we were given in the problem, well, we could go back to one sig fig. We really wanted to. Oop. So um, if we wanted to be real strict with sig figs, and then we can erase that and just say three times 10 to the fifth newtons. All right, we found the reactionary force. Good job, everybody.